Hello guys, welcome back to the free Hammers podcast live. It's me and Paul this week and we're going to be going through everything West Ham related and any news that we like to cover through sports. If you've got any questions throughout the show, put them in the live chat and we'll try our best to answer them. If you've not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you like our content and please share with your friends. Let's get on with it. It's the free Hammers and it's live. Oh, well, uh, lasted long, didn't it, mate? Um, winning ways and stuff. Um, <laughs> when we start with last night, man, you know, you can, you can say we was unlucky. You can say we created chances. You can say same old, you know, the fullbacks costing us again. Um, yeah, mate, what, what did you make of last night, mate? It's difficult, isn't it? Um I think I think there's there are like you say, mate. There's two sides to it. Um, on the one hand, you know, if you'd have said Chelsea, Newcastle, um, and Burnley four points, you would have took that. You know, you probably would have thought we'd lose to Chelsea and beat Burnley. So you could look at it that way and say, well, we're kind of where we would have expected to be. On the other side of things, though, now it just feels like that win against Chelsea was for nothing. Yeah. Um... Goal. What did you make a goal, mate? Um, it uh, was a good header. It was a good header. What was Cresswell doing? And Cresswell, what was Fredericks doing? Yeah, both, both fullbacks. And again, we, how many times, mate? How many times are our fullbacks going to cost us? How many times? You know, Fredericks. Target as well. It's clear. It's yeah, the, the Fredericks didn't well. close down the cross. And then Cresswell, I don't know what Cresswell was doing. He was trying to, like, you're not going to win many headers trying to kick it. I don't know what he was doing. Um, completely beat. And, uh, and, you know, it's 1-0. And then as soon as they scored, they I don't think they even cared about the game anymore. They were happy enough to just sit back. They would have sat back and defended all day So well-organised. It was so well-organised. So you've got to give them that. Uh, yeah, and that is the frustrating thing. Again, you can look at it and say we were unlucky. We should have scored three goals. Antonio should have scored. Suchek should have scored. Haller should have scored. Although the Haller goal wouldn't have counted because it is on. Handball, yeah. Um, so we should have scored three goals and we had good chances. We had a lot of shots, but the game plan was terrible. First half weren't too bad, but then the second half was shocking. You know, I, 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 I don't understand the game plan of saying, right, we're playing against one of the biggest teams in the league. You know, they'll deal with crosses all day long. That's their... And Pope, and Pope was picking it up every time in the yeah, first Pope's half. Six mate. foot seven. Yeah. So Moyes sits there and thinks, I know what we'll do. Let's go down the wings and put crosses in. I, it just was never, ever going to work. We could have played all night and it wouldn't have worked. Um, and it was really, really poor from David Moyes, really poor tactically. I think, I don't, like I say, overall in the game, you could say we're unlucky, but the tactics were terrible. Um, and then, again, what is the problem with him with substitutions? You know, by the end of that game, Antonio, Antonio's done three 90 minutes. Oh, mate, he's just God, done. He needs he's to rest. He needs, he to, needs rest. to rest. Bowen is starting to look really tired. Um, Four nows is starting to I look thought, tired. I thought even Dex looked tired last night, yeah, mate. Uh, um, you yeah. know, El Sat, all the West Ham fan shows, you know, man of the match nearly every single match. He's tired. He's tired. It's a lot of football. Even for a young lad, he's tired. And you had before the game David Moyes moaning about fixture congestion, but then he's not rotating. He's playing the same eleven, and then he's not using his substitutions. You're like, not bringing on Jack. You're not brought on a jetty, which nearly made me fall off my chair. I know, uh, unbelievable. I never thought we'd see him again for five yeah. minutes. You know, um, you know and someone I think it was Gonzo made a really good video today about Johnson. You no, know, we don't play, in my opinion, in the next game. Gonzo said, is that Johnson's career at West Ham over already? Mm. In terms of, you know, if he can't get in now when it's really, really bad, you know, we probably are going to sign fullbacks in the summer. What does that say if he's not going to put him in even when he's oof, that bad? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a shame because there was, after the Chelsea result, a lot of positivity, even after Newcastle, 2 all. you know, not a bad point. Um, you start start thinking, uh, you know, maybe Moyes can turn this around. Maybe he can do this. And then a game like yesterday, with really, really poor setup, really, really poor tactically, not using his substitutes, not using his bench, 
running his players into the ground, it just even more, more cements he should not be here next season. I think the problem is he will be if we stay up. I think so, mate, as well. Um, any positives in that game for you? I thought Thomas Showcheck was fantastic yesterday. Yeah. He really did. I, th I think he's um, he has been described as West Ham's Fellaini. Uh, you know, he's not as uh, as a nuisance as him. But he's got. He's such a. I don't know he seems to get in these positions of goal scoring. He seems to get his head on everything. Quite good with the link up play as well. You know, he, he keeps the ball moving. I was really impressed with him last night. Now, and it's a shame he would have been three and three last night if he would have put one of them away. Yeah, um, he, he probably should have done. He should have scored the first one. Great chance. And yeah, he's a really looks a really good player. Um, hopefully we do start. And then obviously, it's, what, £13 million, which to be honest, seems like an absolute bargain. Um, it'd be brilliant, really, really good signing. Um, just, I just want to say, just because we, we were just talking about Moyes not using his bench for rotating. Hello, JP. Just I can see the comment there about saying we don't have enough options from the bench. I don't buy that, mate. I don't buy it. Even if he thinks the players ain't necessarily good enough, it's not even about that. It's about resting the players that he does think are good enough because they're just going to end up getting injured. You know, you, you can't. He, he could easily have bought on. I'm not saying these players would have come on and changed the game and won the game, but it would have given the players a rest. He could have bought on Wilshire. He could have bought on Noble. He could have bought on Lanzini. Um, you know, there's there's players there. He could have bought on a Jetty earlier. He could have bought on like, Silva. Silva, he could have bought on. He's Masuaku. Got a, Masuaku, exactly. He's got loads of options. I'm not saying those players are going to come on and win the game. They're going to come on and change it. But at least it will give these players that are absolutely shattered a rest. The last half hour last night, we didn't do anything because the players couldn't run. Antonio couldn't run. So what's the point? You know, change it. I, 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 I he just, I, like I say, I don't think these players are going to come on and change the game and win it, but at least give the boys on the pitch a rest. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, no, I don't, mate. Uh, I'm going to go back on the comments here because it's unfair. Uh, Fredericks and Arthur need to go, in my opinion. I'd like us to bring in Jaden Boggle from Derby and Rico Henry from Brentford. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I suppose this is quite a good time to go on to it. Uh, yeah, in terms of the game, very disappointing. I thought it was a little bit unlucky. Uh, just before we go on fullbacks, mate, what about that tackle on Bowen? Oh, uh, shocking. Trowski one. Yeah, shocking. And and again, how many times are we going to talk about it? And I know every West Ham fan said I it. I it was like a bit Roy Keeney. You know, like when Roy Keeney did the Alfie Garland, obviously not with the intent. It was nasty tackle. He's got form for it as well, mate. He's got form for it. And it's a disgrace that VAR didn't even look at it. It's a yeah, yeah, I thought that. Why did they even look? Like, I, I don't know if they've if the Premier League have released a statement or anything yet. According to the pundits and everything after the game, they didn't even look. How can you? What's the point in VAR if you can't even look at it when in a tackle like that? I, I don't know, mate. I don't know. Scandalous. Well, it's inconsistency, you know. Mm -hmm. Like you had the Arsenal one the night before, and Ketia got sent off. It was a hundred times worse tackle. Mm -hmm. Try to ask you. Um, another positive that come out of that game: Chris Woods didn't score against us. It was disallowed because that would have been seven in seven. You no, know, it'd be the new Lukaku. Uh, yeah, so back on the fullbacks thing, mate. Um, I did actually make that as one of our banners to talk about today. Um, yeah, um, listen, I'd sacrifice and any attacking players in the summer. I think there's a no, there's a fair base there. You know, Antonio, Owen, Vanels, Haller, if they all were to stay, so Anderson, fullbacks, all out for fullbacks. Like that is crucial. Left and right, left and right. Um, what about you, mate? Yeah, no, absolutely. We are in desperate need. Um, desperate need. Fredericks at, Fredericks at least has got a bit of pace about him so he can recover. That is it. But is that's it. it. He's defensively poor. He doesn't get out to block crosses. Cresswell does nothing. I, d I don't know what Cresswell does anymore. I don't know what the point of him is. He don't he can't put good crossing anymore. He don't put crosses in. He can't take a man on. He can't defend. He don't make tackles. He hasn't got any pace. He's a massive liability. And it's a shame. I like Aaron Cresswell. He really hasn't well, been the mate, same. Yeah, no, he, he, he has been a good player. Injury. Um, you know, he hasn't been the same player. But we are so weak 
on both sides. Um, and yeah, we really, really need to address it. Hopefully we do. But when was the last time we spent any money on a fullback? Yeah, this was discussed actually, West Ham Fan TV, about right backs in particular. You know, you look at it, Sammy Byram for seven million, probably the last time we spent a bit of money on a right back. You know, he barely even played. You can go through them, you know, by demo. I think he was nothing. Dabletta, I think Fredericks, a couple of million. Uh, Dinkinson, loan from Arsenal. Um, you know, before that, Lucas Neal. I don't know what Lucas Neal cost. But, you know, he was a good right back. He was a very good right back. Then you look at the left backs. Masawaku, what was Masawaku? A couple of million. Was he a couple of million, yeah, for left backs? Then, I don't know, before Cresswell, who was our left backs, you know? George McCartney. Oh, he was a good player. I'll get George, 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 was, George was a good left back. But, um, yeah, it's, a, it's an area that you can't um, can't undervalue anymore in the modern game. So important. The best teams in the world have amazing fullbacks. You know, Liverpool, Robertson and Trent. Um, Barcelona, Semedo, Woody Almeida. Uh, Real Madrid, Carvalho, Carvalho and um, Marcelo, Mendy. You know, it's such a crucial position. Yeah, and we get targeted. We get targeted every game. Every game yeah. we get targeted. Um, and like I, I say, could, I could forgive, mate, if they could defend. You know, you could say, OK, they don't offer the attacking threat. Don't offer nothing. Don't no. attack and they don't defend. No, they so, don't. Yeah. They, like you say, mate, they offer nothing. Like I say, in the, uh, after the Tottenham game, when you had Marino coming out and and literally just saying, we targeted Cresswell because he's there. He's oh, I she was basically saying they targeted Fredericks last night. Yeah, and that's well, that's what that's what they do because we are so weak there. Um, yeah, no, and it it has to be addressed. It it has to be addressed in the summer. It really does. Definitely, and there are. Some really good ones out there, mate. As you say, like some people are saying it there, Matty Cash, meant to be a fantastic player. Mm -hmm. uh, Max Ahrens, Lewis. There's some fantastic fullbacks out there. you just got a bit of a gamble. Um, you play five at the back. We need to stop leaking goals. There's a shout for that. I've got to say, there is a shout. You could maybe play Cresswell as left centre-back. He did it before, but didn't he? He Moyes. looked a bit better. He doesn't have to do as much running. I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't think it's the answer. To be honest, um, I thought Diop played quite well actually yesterday. There's a few commanding bits where he brought the work, like a bit like old Diop. Yeah, no leader um, slagging him off in the chat. But. No, I think I think Diop was all right. Um, Obana was solid um, as usual. The, the thing is, is there's only so much that the centre backs can do when the full backs are so weak. They're constantly like imagine your Ogbonna or your Diop. You are constantly worrying about what Fredericks or Cresswell's doing. You're worrying about where That's are the same, they? Same with, Bowen, man. same with Bowen and whoever's. Well, oh, you keep saying it, mate, about Fornell's playing on left wing. He's got to do Cresswell's job. Mm. He's terrified. He's covering back. Obviously, he's not a defender. But if he weren't there, Jesus Christ, he'd be even more exposed. Cresswell. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, just a comment I was sort of saying there. Fredericks and Cresswell need to be transfer listed. I would get Matty Cash and the left back from Wigan. Why not? Can't be the worse. True. But that's why I'm saying about Ben Johnson as well, like what Gonzo said. If it can't be any worse, put Ben Johnson in. Um, who would you guys replace Declan Rice with? Who do you think we would have a replacement with him with Thomas Shochek if we can sign him permanently? Um, for me, if Declan goes, you know, Sochik's there, I would want maybe like another athlete sort of player in there. For you me, know, it's, it's... Another Coyote sort of player. Yeah, I, I would pick the name that I've been shouting about on this channel for about two years, um, Kessie, Frank Kessie from AC Milan. Um, yeah. I, I don't I don't think we've really got any chance. Not now. Uh, I think maybe he, last summer, maybe. but He scored a really good goal against Juventus, actually, the other day. Yeah. Um, but he's one that I would love to see us go for. Um, for him or, you know, if Sochek's the athlete, you need someone who can ping. You know, and I say all the time, Shelby, whether you like him or not, 
some of them balls he put in against us, just ridiculous. There's, we ain't got no one who can ping a ball 60 yards like that. What about um, Decore if Watford go down? Yep, good signing. Be a good player. So, like He's like, a, you know, poor man's NDD and he athletic. A goal with him as well. Um, but the one that we missed out on, mate, uh, obviously, rumoured to be going to Leicester, William Cavalli. You know, mm. that? It says a lot. You know what I mean? It says a huge, huge lot. I don't know if um, any of the other teams have got anyone, Palmer for Villa or anyone like that. I like Cantwell as well. And we'll talk about him in a minute. Um, only a tidy team with a great manager. We are not as good as them and we got carried away. Yeah. How sad is that? We're not as good as Burnley. Who Who's the star in that Burnley team? Even then. But Pope's you know, a fantastic goalie. Well, I would have at West Ham. I wouldn't say Burnley are a tidy team. You know, they're well organised. They're well drilled. They know what their game plan is. They stick to it. They're happy to defend. Um, Daesh is, is, is a good manager for what he does. Um, I have to say, especially again after watching them, you know, last night, it's not the sort of football I'd really want to see at West Ham, um, but I don't, and I, it's not as if it's not as if like all of a sudden Burnley are unbeatable. We just set up completely wrong. We just they, played they have got exactly the way they wanted sheet, us to play. Fantastic clean sheet, though, mate. That was their fourteenth clean sheet of the season. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. Like I say, yeah. they they're really good at defending. That's what they do. They're happy with it. But we just played right into their hands. You know, we really did. You know, we needed we needed to try and get through the lines. We needed to run at them. We needed to be getting to the byline, cutting the ball back to the edge of the box, not floating in crosses. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Amma sort of says, fullbacks need to try and stop crosses. They never do. Um, we have to invest real money on fullbacks. we never done it. Uh, but we have to now, as there's such important position in the modern game, yeah. It's, it's true. It's massive. They're, they're meant to be your main attacking threat. One of your main attacking threats now. Uh, we need a good fullback. Jeremy, need I say more? Um, so check as, as, um, I, I suppose he can't actually sign for anyone yet, but I don't know if there's been any word about where Ngaki is going. No, it's going to be quiet, that is, mate. It's going a little bit quiet. So I know he can't actually sign for anyone until the end of the season. Season's so. over now, I think, yeah. So Chick Rice and Fornells were out on their feet against Burnley. How can Moyes not see he's running them into the ground? Yeah, and it, I'll, I'll tell you what, if Antonio gets injured, you know, Haller's just come back from injury. What then? What then, mate? Mm. Yeah, 100%. You could see it. Like you say, the whole, the, the Fornells, Rice, Suchek, Bowen, Antonio, they were shattered. They were they were absolutely done. Yeah. Um, by the end to them for running themselves into the ground for all these games. But yeah, they're... and then they're going to have to do it again in two days' time. They're going to get injured. Do you know what I mean? God, oh, they're going to get injured. Sorry, I've skipped well ahead. I do apologize. Um, we'll do set. Oh, sorry, one, one comment. Uh, Silva wasn't on the bench, which was mental. Yep, another young player that's probably going to go missing. Um, the boys were going at the first water break. Um, what tackle? Do you think was worse, Trogoski on Bowen last night or in Ketty on Lesser? I, I know, I know, we're West Ham fans and we're blessed, but that Trogoski was an awful challenge. Awful, could have done his knee in, mm. done him completely there. Um, if we lose our next two games, we need to sack him. Should have sacked him already. They ain't going to sack him now, are they? I wish they would. Um, I feel we should. He looking at under twenty threes for fullbacks and give Haman a chance at left back. Can't do any worse than Massa and Cresswell, surely. I don't think I could do any worse than Cresswell and Massa, apart from I'd be blowing after five minutes, not thirty minutes, because <laughs> I'm so unfit. Uh, the linesman was five yards away. Yep, good. Um, the ref dealt with it at the time. Apparently, that's why VAR didn't look at it. It's ridiculous, be, though, be, you know. It is ridiculous. To be fair to the lino, he did flag. Straight away, he was up straight away. But the, it's not the the lino can't tell the ref to give him a red card. But that the ref dealt with it at the time. I know that's a thing with retrospective action, but that's not VAR, is it? Like VAR, the whole point of VAR is, is an point, obvious error. Yeah, is if the referee's made a mistake. That's the whole point. So um, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't get that. <laughs> Fredericks. 
Fredericks Champions League, Pace League, technically. Uh, Fredericks, nothing. Um, I'm not understanding why Wilshere is continuously overlooked, especially when Fennell and Lanzini are playing average. Yeah, Fennell's looked really tired last night. I think Fennell has got a nice pass in him every now and then. I will give him a little bit of credit. Yes, I mean, he's been involved in, what, three of our last five goals. So, yeah. a lot of people have been slating him. I think he's been doing well, especially considering the amount of covering he has been doing on the on the left-back position. Yeah, he's been doing his defensive work. I'll give him that, yeah. yeah. Not what Anderson wouldn't do that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, how did I forget him at right back? Joey. Joey. Uh, the arm is an impact sub. He does not track back. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I totally agree with that. I understand why he put him in. You know, try something different. He deserved a start after you know, coming on and being really busy and really active for the first Newcastle and the Chelsea game. Yeah, he's definitely an impact sub. He hasn't got legs, but he, he is very skillful when he's on the ball, though. He, is, he, he does do things quite well. Like I say, back of pace now. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, great, great player, but he is better coming off the bench, I think. Um, and maybe that maybe that weren't really the game for him. I don't know. But yeah, no, definitely um, great player. But yeah, he is. He's, he's better off the bench. Yeah. Um, we review about Cresswell. What about Anderson and Haller? Really underperformed for the money spent. So chicken bone have given us hope. And we should hang on to them if we can. So I, um, I was defending Anderson quite a lot at the beginning, you know, since we've come back, you know, we needed to be mentally right to stay up. You know, he's shown he's another, you know, no one really cares about their job. And if you don't support West Ham, you really care. For God's sake, you can run a bit of effort in and, you know, when you're going for that step over, it a hundred percent when you're going for that pass, pass it a hundred percent. He has just been ridiculously lazy, and for me, Matt, I don't care if he goes. No, I think um, I, I don't. I don't think he really wants to be here. He's, he's clearly got absolutely zero respect for There's the manager. There's a great player out there. There's a great player in there. Oh yeah, of course he is. Um, but he, he doesn't want to be here. He's got no respect for the manager. I, I, I don't blame him. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, a Anderson, no. If he don't want to be here, get rid of him. And I don't. He shouldn't be. He shouldn't be playing with that kind of attitude. I think it's a bit harsh on Haller. Yeah, Haller you know, are, are harsh. He's our top scorer. He nearly scored. Should have scored really with his first touch last night. When he came on, he started winning headers and little flick ons. So I think it's a bit harsh on Haller. Don't forget, it's his first season in the league. He had and, no support for a lot yeah. of this season. Yeah, uh, I could. I could. I can maybe agree with you a little bit in terms of Haller's work ethic I'd say maybe there is a bit of laziness there I don't know I think that might be the style of player he is you know you're not going to have him running around like Antonio I wish he did I mean it'd be like Drogba then but then he wouldn't be at West Ham hmm. um, be honest lads who was the last quality fullback we had in my opinion was Glenn Johnson uh, Lucas Neal was a great right back he was a great right back Lucas Neal probably it mentioned him earlier mate um, Guy Demel I think was a good he was a good player. John Pansu. <laughs> John Pansu was a legend, mate. Right, I liked Rep Kirk right back as well. I liked Rep Kirk right back. Um, I know, but Lucas Neal is uh, Glenn Johnson, great right back. But yeah, if you're thinking on that, yeah, I really liked Lucas. Um, you said about Mitch McCartney. Mitch mm. McCartney was a good left back. He was, I don't care. Um, the first season we came back up in 2003. Konchesky got in the England team. Mm. Oh, he, what, he, he went to Liverpool. Liverpool signed him at the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? At one point, he was a good left back. Man, that was 17 years ago. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, anyone else, mate? Stick out. Full back. Full back. Ilunga. Mm. Was he? I mean, if, if, you, if you're thinking sort of recent times. Yeah, I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? I did like Jenkins in the first year. Yeah, first year, Jenks was good. Um, he was good first year. Yeah. It just shows, doesn't it, like uh, um, how low we have been on quality. That's what happens if you don't spend any money. Considering, you know, in Premier League era, with the best left-backs to ever play, you know, Julian Dix and Stuart Pearce have played for West Ham. I mean, mm. Nigel Winterburn left-back. I know he was 37 when he played first. You know, it was brilliant. Lovely. 
Pablo it's Zabaleta about, as well. One of the best Premier League fullbacks of all time, yeah. Just yeah. You know what I mean? Wayne Bridge. <laughs> he was awful for us, really. Wayne Bridge. Jesus Christ. Um, spot on there, Tom. Uh, but I think it's a free if I remember. Got loads of people picking out Cresswell and Fredericks. Uh, Cresswell and Fredericks versus Aaron and Lewis on Saturday would be fun to watch. Yeah, that is two fullbacks. That, I know Paul says it, you know, if we have 50 mini on, gosh, go and buy both of them. Mm. But um, yeah, that is going to be where you see two fullbacks that can actually do the job properly. I know Norwich, you know, they're down there for all the reasons, but these two guys, you know, in the right team will be a real force. You got to think that Andy Robinson played for the whole team that got relegated, you know, and he's arguably the best left back in the Premier League. Uh, Diop plays better with Oggy. He hates playing left centre back. Yeah, and I think he calms Diop down. Mm. He calms him down. Um, if you were picking Premier League here for West Ham, fullbacks would be Julian Dix and Glenn Johnson. That tells you how long we've gone with that. Yeah, I agree, mate. That who can argue, you know, with Julian Dix? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Who can argue? Um, I like Scott Minto as actually as well. Uh, Suchek should play number ten role. Yeah, there's an argument for that. You know, like I say, he reminds me a little bit of Fellaini, the nuisance this, and maybe he could play that cam role. Yeah, I think I think he could. He's dangerous. He gets in the right positions. He's good at coming into the box. Um, I don't know what his sort of range of passing is like. I don't know. Yeah, I've not seen him ping one yet or try to ping one. Or like slight little through balls through and things like that. But it, it, I mean, it, under Moyes, like you say, mate, Moyes could use him as the Fellaini sort of battering ram. Um, yeah, I'd rather see, you know, an, an actual sort of proper number 10 and have Moyes, uh, sorry, not Moyes, have a Suchek sitting with Rice. I think that works really well, you know, Suchek. It's such a shame that Lanzini is not what mm. he was. He years ago, you know, if you had Lanzini, it's a very good team now. Mm. Lanzini just just ain't there anymore. It's just not. He ain't picking that ball up, dropping a shoulder, turning and shooting. Not there. He, I don't think he's got any confidence at all mm. anymore. Um, so apparently, mate, um, Ngakia is off to... Apparently. Well, if he yeah. is, then there's no way we were going to keep him. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry for that, Tom. I did miss that one. I didn't read it. Uh, replace Rice with Decore. We did mention that earlier. I agree with that. That'd be a good signing. Um, every team knows how to set up against us now. We could be in a right trouble. Yeah, the blueprint's been written on how to beat us, you know. It's very easy to beat us. Overload the fullbacks. We'll crumble. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think the only thing that we've got going in our favour is the teams that we've got to play. Probably not good enough to do it. I hope, so, advantage, but... I hope so. I hope so. <clears throat> um, moving on. Carry on through the comments before we move on to the Norwich game. Would you rest for Saturday? Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, Gary, when we go on to the Norwich game. Um, they can upgrade it to a red. Yep. Uh, do you think we should go 4 4 2 Saturday? We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Anderson and Haller would have been spun a yarn by David Sullivan about playing in Europe in order to get them to sign. The reality is Sullivan is hitting them now and they want that. Agree. I really can't understand why Wilshire, Johnson and the Jetty don't get a chance to play. Wilshire massively for me. You know, he hasn't played a lot of football. <clears throat> He's been injured. He looked quite sharp when he was on. You know, if you're going to if you need someone to play, you play them now when we're in trouble. You know, this is where you take them gambles. If he gets injured, he gets injured. You go down. Who cares? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, Lucas Neal, not Johnson for me. Um, we only had Johnson for six months. Yeah, 14 games, I think it was, mate. 14 games. Um, I can't look at what a player he was, though. He was a fantastic player. Went on to win those things. Uh, why Creswell? <laughs> okay, right. So let's move on. Um, Norwich, mate. Uh, come on. There's one game we're going to win. Surely. Surely this is the game where we secure survival. Surely. It's a, it's a, it's an absolute must win. Must win. Um, this is the one where, like you say, mate, I've, and I've been banging this for the last couple of shows, but 
beat Norwich, beat Watford, we're safe. Um, but we have flesh that up while you're talking, mate. Yeah, beat beat Norwich, beat Watford, we're safe. But we have to beat Norwich. We that is an absolute must win game. Um, if we, we lose that, win that, we're in, we're in trouble again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, must must win game. Yeah. And as you can see there, look, Norwich last five games is probably even more than that. The last five games they have lost. All difference is atrocious. Uh, only won five games all season. Surely, surely. Um, looking at their, let me just remove that. Now. Um, looking at their top goal scorers, obviously Timo Puki, but he's gone really, really quiet since. Um, Todd Cantwell, I really, really like. Uh, can't say I know much about that guy, that Joseph Rich. Um, and obviously Adam Dye. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, so, yeah, so this Saturday usually line up, mate. This Saturday lined up in their last game. Uh, Tim Crawl in goal. Max Ahrens, uh, close. Godfrey. Godfrey's injured, potentially. Or is he the guy that's rated 50 million, I think? Uh, Jamal Lewis, Teti, uh, Buendia, Fernandez, Steberman, Baranich, and Pukki. Um, Anyone you really like there or scared of? Obviously, you know, the, the full-backs... Uh, big, big, big fan of um, Pookie, like say, mate, started flying, started the season oh, the month, yeah. flying. Um, but since then, it's gone quiet. There's, there's the thing is, I like the way Norwich play. I like, you know, they try and play good football, they try good and good last year, good last year. Um, they're very, very open, uh, but they, 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 they haven't got the quality. You know, if you're looking at their team, to, apart from the fullbacks, take them out. Man for man, you know they're they're they 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 just don't have the quality. Uh, but I like I like Norwich. You know I like the way they play. They play good football. The manager, it's good. Tom makes a good point there. Actually, so Norwich have lost five on a bounce and will be relegated if they lose to West Ham. So you know that you may get a little bit more out of them purely because you know that you know when it goes down to that last game and it's like oh if we don't in. Know, you get that little bit of extra fight, that last little bit of belief. I don't know. But, I think they're resigned to it, mate. Their their managers even. But they're come getting out, out of they, it. They're not getting out. No, of no. It, their, their managers even come out and said now that them surviving is unrealistic. You know, yeah. If if we don't beat them, then they'll lose the next one and get relegated. So I, I, yeah. it's not. You know, I, I'm kind of hoping. Don't get me wrong. I, I think they're professional enough. They'll still come out and they'll play a game. But I, I'm kind of hoping they'll be a bit more. Well, it's, it's, it's a worthless I match. Think, uh, I mean. But that's a good point, actually, there. That, like, I thought Norwich were unlucky against Watford on Tuesday. I think that was the killer blow, actually. Mm. You know, like the, is it now? It's, it's over. I just I just hope it's not a draw as well, man. Like, draw's not good enough either. It's not, you know, shouldn't be losing these games. Um, look at the last time we played them. Um, good game, actually. One of the rare performances we played really, really well. 2-0. Uh, Sebiala and Amalenko. Um, it was a good win, that was, actually. Um, really good performances from Real Anderson, a real good performance. Um, what do you reckon, mate? And, you know, let's talk about some of them questions that come up about formations. Um, what would you do, mate? What would you change? Or anything you'd change? I'm glad you've got to be rested. The, that's that's the problem, mate. And the fact that this is a must-win game. I mean, you know, what do you do? Do you rotate Lanzini in for four nows? I hope he don't start Mark Noble, but I feel like oh, he might. Um, for me, Ben Johnson comes in. This is me, not Moyes. Um, I mean, has yeah. to start. If, if it was, like you say, mate, if it was me picking the team, then I would probably start Allaire, Um, You know, Antonio and Bowen, I know they're both shattered and they need a rest, but I'd at least start them, give them, give them 60 minutes um, and then maybe change them out. Um, you know, like I say, you could bring in Lanzini for four hours. I'd bring Masaraku in because well, he can't be any worse than Cresswell. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> mm. I did not know that. Uh, I don't think, that, uh, I think and Anderson's been ruled out, hasn't he? Yeah, I think, He's upset Moyes a bit, and I think Moyes has had a bit of a party with him. I think something like that. Um, yeah, I think we can hurt them. I th you know, good thing about 
since the Chelsea game is a real positive, we are actually creating chances, aren't we? Mm. No, we're not having games, you know, no shots on target and all that you know, malarkey, which I can't stand when we do that. We can hurt them. We've just got to cut out their mistakes at fullback. You know, they've got to be switched on. Um, do you reckon, mate, predictions? Let's go out, mate. I think we'll win. I think we'll win as much as <laughs> as much as now. All that. I think if we score first, if we score first, we will win. Yeah, I think after all that confidence from the last week, um, sort of drained a bit. We 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 should be beating these. We we should be beating these. Um, and I think it'd be that you you can't predict a loss. If you can pick, if you can pick two teams, any teams to play at the moment. You think, okay, we're gonna win, and we can get some confidence. You're picking Bournemouth and Norwich, mm. you know. So if we can't beat Norwich, you know the problem. The problems are deep anyway at the club. So we don't deserve to start. I don't think if we don't beat Norwich, I really don't think we deserve it. I didn't realise the show was sponsored by Luke tonight, actually. Yeah, I know. We're getting it wearing the same bloody t-shirt. But there you go. I've got the Luke t-shirt <laughs> on tonight. Um, I'll tell you one thing before we move on, mate. I think it was your first game as well, and I thought I'd have a little bit of nostalgia about it. That's right, yeah. Um, it was 2-2. I did some little research on the game, mate. It was 2-2 um, in 1995 season, so it would have been probably... And it was the 24th of December, so we probably were both taken for our 10th birthday. <laughs> and two goals from Tony Cotty. Um, yeah, uh, your memories of that day, mate your first ever experience at um, Upton Park. Do you know what? I remember the, the, the main thing I remember is the the walk to the ground is the main thing I remember. And um, and it was my stepdad who took Where me. Where were you sitting? Where were you sitting? I was sitting in the West, West Lower. Um, and my stepdad bought me a shirt on the way to the ground because I didn't have a West Ham shirt. Uh, and it was a centenary shirt. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, West Lara was sitting, um, and it that really, really, I mean, obviously, that that was it, mate. That was the start, you know, that was that yeah. was the start. I don't have much memories of the game or anything like that. I just I was, ten, I was, ten sitting, years West old, right, I was sitting West Upper, and I just I, what will always stick, stick with me that first time you into your seat, you, know, mm. you walk out and you see the pitch was just like wow. I mean, going back then, it's the little things. Old like, West End as well. And like the, uh, obviously the the old club shop. You know, I remember the porter cabin. Yeah. When you walked in outside. You know, it's that it's that kind of thing. I remember and uh, just just the 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 atmosphere, the the vibe. And I, I've said many times on here that's that's the biggest biggest thing that I miss about the bowling and Upton Park. It's not even really the stadium. It was. The area outside it and the vibe and the, the feeling, world, everything, yeah, yeah. And like I, I used to absolutely love coming out the ground after a game, and you're just in that crowd, you know, walking down the barking road. I, I, I miss that, you know. That's 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 what I miss, and that I remember that from that first game. Yeah, no, I just thought I'd dig that up because I thought I know, I know it was both our first game, which is really really weird because <laughs> that time me and Paul didn't know each other then. Yeah, we don't we sort of become real good friends when we got to about year 10, 11, 12. But um, yeah, it's just weird that that was both our first game. So Norwich always has a little bit of a soft spot for me because of that. That was my first ever West Ham game. Um, I'm back in now. Um, start Hello and put Antonio wide right. Johnson should come in for Cresswell. Yeah, I would like to see that going left. Antonio right, Hello up top. And flashes of the... Uh, Frankfurt sort of style formation. Uh, we see it once, didn't we, in the Southampton game, and it really worked really, really well. Mm. Um, I think we should go four four two. Try and have the game won by half time. Yeah. So again, that keeps Mark Noble out of the team. So check and Rice. Uh, some good. You know, we've got wingers there. Um, Norwich play an open game, so our finishing has to improve. As we have chances to score, Davis says. Uh, when on the left, uh, we'll go for about another 10 45 minutes. Um, anything else, mate? That's uh, sort of you yeah, this just, week, just, just on that. I don't, I don't, the Bowen on the left, I don't really like that 
Bowen on the left. I think when when he was there yesterday, he was a bit. I think he felt a bit lost. Like he, he likes he to cross cut. the ball. He couldn't cross the ball. No, nah, he, he likes well. cutting back. Um, for me, it's, if you're gonna play play Bowen on the right, Antonio on the left, um, Alair in the middle. For me, just just on that point. Yeah. If you've got any questions, guys, anything, uh, put them in there. Because uh, Gary's just put a question up there. Uh, what school did you go? You went Cumberland School. There you go. The one um, is now not there anymore. It's a uh, book be now. Boys' school next to McDonald's. Uh, Cumberland moved to the old side site. Yeah, Cumberland School. Um, anyone in the chat to that school? Very, very interested. Um, does Moyes know we're allowed five subs? No, I don't think he knows we're allowed two. <laughs> um, why is it always our managers are like that as well, mate? No, Harry Redknapp was even like that. Didn't like a sub. Reactive, isn't it? Like it's the, these Moyes doesn't know how to change a game. I, I genuinely believe that he doesn't know how to change a game. He can't. He, I mean, we can see it sitting at home watching. We can see when Sank's not working, or like like all West Ham fans can see it and are saying, "Make the change, make the change." But he just, he, he I don't know. He just, it's like he's too Please, scared to change it. Please as well, like. It's, it, it's like it's left too late, you know. Again, maybe we're a bit overreactive as fans, but it can't be that bad at what we're thinking because nearly 90% of the fan base are saying exactly the same thing. But at last night, at the 55th minute, mm-hmm. something needed to change. Mm. It didn't, you know. That's where you should have put you on or you should have bought someone on. Do you know what I mean? <sighs> um, <laughs> I agree. Needs to be on the right, far more effective. Yeah, he's crossing so much better when he's on the right. Um, link up too much with Fonell's last night, which I didn't like either. You know, he, he seems to have quite a good little link up with him. Mm. Um, why do you think Wilshire can't get a game? I don't know, mate. It's a hard plan. I would plan. He's forward thinking, he has got that pass in him. I don't know, unless there's something in training or there's something the medical team is saying. I don't know whether he's on a massive appearance bonus and, you know, David Sullivan's going, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't know, mate. I don't. Mm. Do you feel, mate? Do you plan? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think I'd, well, I, there, there is an argument for starting him. Like you say, if if the likes of Fournel's Lanzini, Lanzini hasn't been pulling up trees, unfortunately. Um, Fournel's, I think, has been doing well, but he is starting to look tired. Yeah, absolutely. Play Wilshire or, or, or bring oh, him off the bench. I went to the old Cumberland school when it had an upper and lower schools age. Show oh, my age. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, I did want to show you something, actually, mate. Um, just on TalkSport when I was doing a little bit of research for the show. Probably pretty obvious, actually. Um, what make of that, mate? Um, yeah, I think um, that's that's been... Um, yeah. I mean, that's 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 been around for... For a it's while. crazy, though, isn't it? That is absolutely crazy. Dimitri Pyatt is easily the most talented player West Ham has seen in the last decade. Benjamin midfield has just spent 18 months at the Hammers, but what a half season it was. Uh, bloody, 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 bloody. It's ridiculous. There you go. Look, 148 mm. games, he created 193 chances. Lanzini did 165 in 121 games. Noble is... It just shows, you know, he was yeah. too good for West Ham, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's exactly it, mate. That's what it shows. You know, he was one of the best players in the world at the time. Legitimately yeah. one of the best players in the world. Um, the only player we've had close to him is Paolo. Yeah. I'm talking to Paolo, mate. I was going to end the show with it, but um, we'll do it now. It's a happy 56th birthday, I believe, today. Oh, there you Paolo go. Canio. So, uh, happy birthday to the great man, God, to me. No? <laughs> um, yeah, happy birthday, mate. Um, want to show whenever you want, Palo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, come, Palo. We'll have you on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We'll have Palo on. Um, what's he saying here? Fig rolls. Yes, I know. I like fig rolls, actually. I don't know whether Paul probably don't even know what they are. I don't even know. What's a fig roll? They're like a biscuit with fruit inside. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no, like fruity yeah, fig biscuits. Fig is a fruit. A fruit, uh, fig is a fruit, it's a fruity biscuit. No, nah, like f- f- biscuits with fruit, nah, nah, not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else, mate? West Ham, um, 
I'll tell you what, what we do nearly every show at the minute. Um, confidence um, in terms of percentage meter at the moment for uh, Dana? No, no, I still, I still think we'll be all right, mate. Uh, now I'm, I'm still pretty confident that we'll be, that we'll be all right, that we'll be safe. Um, I, I do think we'll beat Norwich, and then, like I say, it's again. I keep saying it: beat Watford. That's us. We're, we're fine. Um, Just looking, Tottenham doing us no favours at the moment. It's nil nil still in the Bournemouth Tottenham game as we speak. Yeah. What um, about yourself? Do you think we're stout? Yeah, I do. I hate saying it, you know, because I always feel that I'm going to get like, ah, oh, I told you so. Like, who think that's got enough now? Just, 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 just. It's not acceptable. When we do a season review in like two, three weeks' time, I'm sure we'll, you know, we'll dissect it quite openly. It's not good enough to keep saying four seasons at that stadium, they've all been four or five now, I can't remember. Mm. All been more or less relegation threatened, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, score predictions. Oh, God. I, I think we'll win. Tense. Hmm? Well, tense. I I wanna say it I wanna say two nil, but we can't keep clean sheets. Oh, no, so, no. so I'm gonna yeah, have to well, say two. Nil, yeah. I'll say two one. I'll say yeah. two one. A two one actually I would agree with you there, mate, because we can't keep clean sheets to save our life. <laughs> um what's a fig <laughs> roll on? <laughs> um if you weren't West Ham, we're choosing which club to support from today on who would it be and why. Wolves for me. I really like Wolves. I do. I've a, a bit of a guilty pleasure. I think they're a fantastic team to watch. Um, very good manager. And if it was from today, I think Wolves. I, I think Wolves. Wolves uh, remind me of what West Ham were like in the Palo era a little bit. I'm not saying Liverpool. No, no, no. It's, for me, it's just one of them questions where, like, I, I like other teams, but, like, we support West Ham because that's where we're from. I couldn't support a club like Wolves or Liverpool or City or whatever. I'd have to go. I'd, I'd, I'd probably start following Dagenham and Redbridge. Yeah. Um, Did you see uh, Jim White and Natalie Sawyer argument uh, where they were saying about so Jim White was saying, oh, why? He goes, you wouldn't stand a job you didn't like. You wouldn't watch a pro continue watching a program, blah, 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 blah. And he was saying, so why is it that we stay so blindly loyal to clubs and stuff? like You know, like he's just quite any way to geezer, isn't he? And Natalie Sawyer, obviously, he was saying, no, I can't. I support Brentford. I would never, ever support another club. It doesn't matter that they'll probably never, ever be a good club, blah, 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 blah. But I don't get it. Do you know what I mean? I could never support another club. No. Uh, obviously, the question there is if West Ham didn't exist. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, like, I, I get it. Like, if yeah, it's just such a weird. It's it's one of them. It's just a weird concept. Like, I, I like I like other clubs, and I, you know, like Premier League's weird. You know, I, I'm I collect football shirts. I've got a ridiculous amount of football shirts, but I would never get a shirt from another English club. No, no, no. no. Only West Ham. I've got loads of Italian teams and, you know, uh, Spanish teams and I've got a couple of French teams and, but, and, and I like those teams, you know, I really like Juventus. Del Piero is my favourite player of all time. So I've always liked Juventus and I've always kind of followed Juventus. Um, now, for me, Barcelona, because Messi is the best player in the world, I think he's arguably the best player ever. So I really like Barcelona. But I don't support those teams. Do you know what I mean? Just, they're, they're, you know, they're a joy to watch, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I like them, and I, I like, and I keep an eye on them, and I follow them. But I don't support them. It's not the same. You can't. That what it is with West Ham. You well, your own club, you can't. You can't. Yeah, you, you, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, it's. I, you can't even put it into words. It's the yeah. same with me. The the only thing that gives me that, and I know people are going to give me stick now. Um, I'm not a big England fan. Not. Not and I know Paul's not either. No, I get I do it with France. Do you know what I mean? I, there is France in me. You know, my granddad was French, so I do have a soft spot for France. And when you know when France play, I've seen France play in three World Cup finals with one, two, lost one. So 
I do get that same sort of energy and frustration when I'm watching them play. I don't know whether you think you do with Italy as well, that you get that same sort of hurt. Mm. That's the only thing in comparison with another team, guys, no? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I'm just... just the, the abuse, me- no? <laughs> no, no, it's just some, some of the memories I've got of watching Italy play and... Uh, and so I've, I've celebrated goals like it was West Ham. Um, yeah, I, I was in a... I remember, I don't know if you was there, mate, Dunnigan's that night. France beat Brazil 1-0 in the World Cup final when we played Italy. Like, I just remember going... Aah! And everyone's looking at me like, who's Skeza? Well, in, <laughs> in... Yeah, in that... The, the World Cup final was 2006. Yeah. France-Italy. Zidane's last game, wasn't it? We was in the Lord yeah, we Stanley were both we were both yeah. there watching that, yeah. yeah, and um, and it was it was like it was kind of like hatred. <laughs> I know, <laughs> one I know, I know. <laughs> and then when Zidane got sent off, it was like, oh, for God's sake, you know what I mean? It's sad time, sad time, man. Oh, not for you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, to see my hero as well. Zidane's my hero, man. See him go like that is just horrendous. Uh, depends on the next performance. It's going to wrap it up a little bit now. Uh, why not put Antonio and Zande Silva up front? Or Halev and Zande Silva on the front? Ideas, mate. I like it. Uh, 3 1 West Ham. Um, have you ever cried watching West Ham? Great question. Uh, yeah, all in 2003 outside the Sultan pub, Range Road, uh, when we went down. Awful. You know, just awful. Yeah, yeah. That was obviously like our first relegation. And. Um... Yeah, man. Sitting outside the Sultan. That was fun. Um these then. pubs that probably aren't even there such great, No, no it's, it's such a great pub that was as well. Um, yeah, I got know, very, very angry. And I remember, you again, when, final. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, when we were there. Well, no, the, F, yeah, the FA Cup final was just, I just felt numb. It was yeah. heartbreaking, heartbreaking. I did oh, genuinely. Was, I, I, I just, I, I wasn't even upset. I was just numb. It was just, I couldn't believe it because we were so close and we, everyone just thought, like I said, I was there and, um, and in the ground, everyone just thought, this is it. This, this is it. And it. We've done it. Yeah. And then I absolutely heartbreaking, heartbreaking yeah. anger. A uh, couple of times we've thrown shirts at the screen, mate. Oh, that, that, that uh, <laughs> final, let's see. I, and I feel really bad saying this, but at the time, I don't think I wore a West Ham shirt again until about the Christmas. No, nah, mate. That so that was two thousand and seven. I hated football. Two, I two thousand and two thousand and five, wasn't it? Two, two it was two thousand. Was it two thousand and four? Four, yeah. Two thousand four. We lost two thousand and five. We won in it. Yes, yeah, two two thousand and four. And yeah, it was a long time before I even watched football, hated football. again. Hated it. Yeah. I hated football. Um, and it was only obviously the second year when we come up again, you know, you started getting belief again. But at that time, I hated football, I hated mm. it. The closest I've come to that feeling was last year. And I think I told you, mate, at the time, was when Tottenham come back and beat Ajax to get into the Champions League final. That is the most <laughs> I've hated football since that day. I don't like football no more. <laughs> <laughs> um, We'll survive only because Villa and Bournemouth can't win a game. Let's hope not. I'm, you know, I'm keeping one eye on that Tottenham Bournemouth game at the moment. 68 minutes gone, it's still nil. Um, I have a soft spot for Sheffield Wednesday. Um, Messi or Ronaldinho? Messi over Ronaldinho? Are you sure? Uh, yes. Even I say that, and I'm not a Messi fan. I'm a, Ron- I'm a Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho is probably Ronaldinho one of the most unbelievable footballer. Yeah, Ronaldinho, fantastic. One of the most skillful. Footballers love, you know, a brilliant to watch, but Messi's ten times better. I'm, I'm sorry, he is Messi as a, as an all round footballer. There's there's no comparison. Yeah, no, just, you know, from you know Ronnie and um, see, so, you know, you, you can't compete. You know, the numbers speak for themselves. Their numbers are ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. But I've I've always said, I know uh, Paul and Lee, they argue with me, blah blah blah. I've always said the best player I've ever seen is Fat Ronaldo. I think Fat Ronaldo is the best player I've ever seen. I, you know, he wasn't allowed the career, unfortunately, you know, to go on and do it. I think he would have hit Messi numbers. Oh, if he yeah, would have got the injuries. He would have smashed Messi numbers and smashed probably. Ronaldo numbers. But like you say, the injuries obviously killed him. Yeah. 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 But no, obviously, phenomenal, phenomenal player. And I, I think Mbappe's had... got the ability, you know, to go on and be 
level of play, you know, number wise, like any like the youngest player to get to fifty goals or something like that, or hundred mm. goals. I don't know. I think that I, 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 Ronaldo, Messi, for me, Messi is the best player in the world. I think the only player really that you could have an argument with all time, and I've said this before, is probably Maradona. Um, but yeah, for me, for, for me, Messi, no, no doubt. Uh, I'm the same. International football, I don't really uh, follow the Irish team. Um, I could do West Ham. I just enjoy watching the world. Yeah, I love all the tournaments. Love the tournaments. Uh, I cried when Moyes was reappointed. Um, the FA Cup defeat was really, really sore. Um, I got married on that day. <laughs> Terrible battle around there, mate. Wait, on the, uh, on, the, on the cup final day, uh, you got married. Cup final day, I got stitched hey, up. How, did you, there, how did you even do that? Like, yeah. You, you've got to be you would have booked off, it a year you? in advance, though, wouldn't you? You would have booked it a year in advance. Yeah. So I was sorry, it would have been like, nah, sorry. Or, or there would have been a time like that for that, well, 110 minutes. It would have been, no, sorry, wedding stops. We're putting the telly on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, Vic. Um, is he equal to Ronaldo? Yeah. Uh, relegation, he cried as well. Read on Messi. I did love watching R9 and Zizou more. Yeah, Zizou is the best individual performance I've ever seen. I always sat against Manchester United at the Bernabeu. Mm. The best performances I've ever seen, ever. I'm going to leave it there. We've gone for 52 minutes. Thanks, guys. Chat really kicked off. Some good questions tonight. Uh, me and Paul will be back next week, and hopefully we're sitting here saying we're safe. I'm pray to God. Thursday next week, when we do another show, I can say to you, as it's over, done. <laughs> safe but whether that is the case i don't know um one more question in there um the worst you've ever felt after a defeat Wimbledon in the fa cup i was absolutely fuming that night angriest i've ever been um i remember losing to wolves um on a night game um we stayed up the skin of our teeth scott parker scored a few goals against wigan and stuff like that and i remember absolutely slating james Tompkins that game i think james Tompkins did a Silly reverse back pass in that game. We lost it about 3-0. That's one of the angriest I've ever felt. But you, mate? For, for me, like it, it, it has to be the FA Cup final. You, nothing, I hope, will ever touch that. Um, just... What, angry, though? Oh, no, no. Like, well, you said the worst you felt, not angry. Oh, oh I thought you said angry, so... Um, Angry, I don't know, mate. It happens all the time now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's every week. Oh, it's a good question, this one. Uh, what's on your football bucket list? Mine is to visit the new camp. Um, yeah, it's to see Stam and the Champions League. You know, is that a bucket list? Is that a dream? I don't, I don't know. Would you consider it's a definitely it's a dream, but hopefully one day, mate. Hopefully one day. And, and I would love, you know, if you're talking bucket list, if you had unlimited funds. World Cup final, obviously, any team, any team, World Cup final experience, Champions League final, any team. Mm. Um, good show, lads. Thanks. Um, spanked home to Burnley, me steaming bad. Yeah, right. Okay, let's wrap it up there. 20 now, that's it now. Um, thanks, guys. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll tell you what, the comments um, after the show, in terms of the comments that are put into the YouTube comments, have been fantastic um, recently, and I really appreciate it. I've tried to re start replying to them now as well when I get the time. So really big thank you for that. Um, like I say, if you haven't subscribed, please do too, mates, about it. Like as well. Just seem to be stuck at the minute, 2,870. <laughs> We've just been stuck there for such a long time, and it's just, come on. Come, come on, on, lads. Get us come to 3,000. Get come us on. to 3,000, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know what happens when you get to 3,000? Before you know it, you've hit 4,000. Uh, so yeah let's get there come on anyway guys thanks to paul thanks to myself <laughs> thank you on your eyes yeah th thanks myself yeah on your eyes keep believing come on we're gonna do this let's go cheers i'll end it with that